Hi friends, it's Alyssa. I am back with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well. So for today's pick a card, we are asking the question, who is watching you and why? This could be online, on social media, um, somebody who maybe has their eye on you in real life even. It's been a really long time since I did a reading like this on this channel. And I just like to revisit certain subjects every now and then. So we have four decks of cards to choose from today. Deck number one is the Prisma Visions Tarot with the black fluorite. Deck number two is the Golden Tarot with Dalmatian Jasper. Deck three is the Santa Muerte Tarot with the Rose Quartz Point. And deck number four is the Everyday Witch Tarot with Citrine. So, as usual, the timestamps will be in the description. All of my links will be down there as well if you're interested in maybe booking a personal reading with me. I do still offer those. Take a minute, guys. Meditate on the cards. Pause the video if you need to. And I will see you in your reading. Okay, so those of you who chose group number one with the fluorite, the Prisma Visions Tarot, let's find out who's got their eye on you and why. Who has their eye on group one and why? All right, we have the Four of Cups coming up, first of all followed by the Page of Cups, Seven of Wands, the Hanged Man, Three of Pentacles, Ooh, the Illumination card, interesting. Cool. Let me grab a couple more here. Two of Pentacles and Queen of Pentacles. Okay. On the bottom of the deck, you guys, we have the Strength card. So, give me a second here to look these over. Okay. So, right away, Group 1, it's, it's coming through pretty clearly to me that... Um, the person who is watching you at this point in time is someone who very much, uh, I feel very much has a crush on you with the Page of Cups being here. Um, this card can represent like new beginnings, new fresh energy coming in, especially in the realm of love and relationships. This card can represent, you know, love offers being made, people opening up to one another about their emotions. Um, and it can also represent like feelings beginning to grow and, and blossom. Um, so I'm definitely getting a very, a, a, a pretty like romantic, you know, puppy love crush kind of vibe coming through here. Um, the strength card is sort of tying in with this. Strength relates a lot to unconditional love. It is a very gentle, very compassionate kind of energy, typically. Um, you know, this card does, of course, have associations with, like, overcoming adversity and resilience and, you know, willpower and that sort of thing. Um, it's possible that this individual may actually be somewhat infatuated with you, which is kind of taking it a little bit further than just, you know, having a crush. Um, but I definitely get the impression that whoever this is, this is somebody that you probably don't know really well. Um, either someone that you've just recently met or maybe somebody that you have known of for some time, like maybe this, this could be an acquaintance that you've known for a while, but you just don't know each other all that well, you know what I'm saying? Um, because we have the full card showing up here also. This is a, a little bit similar to the Page of Cups. This is also associated with, you know, things that are new, things that are just starting out, um, the start of a new adventure. And the Illumination card here is kind of interesting. This is sort of similar, like, to the sun in, 
in, in most traditional decks. Illumination is about things being brought to light, you know, discovering something new. Um, secrets being revealed, understanding, clarity being gained, that sort of thing. So this card especially makes me think that whoever this is, they are watching you, A, because they have a crush on you, they're very interested in you like romantically but b they're watching you because they want to f to learn more about you they want to kind of figure you out um we have a few pentacles cards showing up here i sort of get the impression that for a, a good number of you this may be a co-worker or somebody that you know through work or somebody that you maybe used to work with at some point um but i feel like this person has been watching you like pretty much for as long as you have known about each other as long as you have been acquainted with each other I feel like this person has had their eyes on you and I feel that for many of you this person is probably watching you primarily online like through your social media um, Facebook Instagram and I, I want to make a note of something here like it's possible that for some of you, this person is perhaps following you from an account that is not like explicitly, that, that doesn't like explicitly state that it's them, if that makes sense. Um, like, especially like on Instagram or Twitter or something, this person may not have like, a lot of information about who they actually are on their account. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So you may not realize that this person is following you, but like I said, I, I get the sense that they have been watching you, following you, keeping an eye on you pretty much the whole time that you have been acquainted with each other. Um, and I get the sense that in person, they are probably... I feel like it's it's rare that this person actually communicates with you directly or interacts with you directly um, with the four of cups and the hanged man being here these are both very very passive energies okay and with the four of cups being here especially I get the sense that this person has um, really been watching you from a distance and like wanting to take action towards you wanting to approach you say something to you but they've really been holding back um the seven of wands here this is kind of about like conflict struggle opposition uh i get the impression with this card that this person we're talking about um like i said has really held back on this desire to actually get closer to you. The Two of Pentacles here is tying in with that as well. This is telling me essentially the same thing. Um, this card is about choice. It tends to have a very in and out, very back and forth kind of energy to it. So sometimes it can represent like somebody, you know, going back and forth on a decision like, should I do this? Should I not do this? I I'm going to do this. Wait, no, I'm not. You know, that sort of thing. So I, I feel like this person like I said, really wants to approach you and wants to interact with you more, but they go back and forth on it. Um, they, it, it, it's like they say to themselves, I'm just gonna do it, I'm just gonna go for it. But then there's this other part of them that's like, wait a minute, hold on, you know, uh, don't be too hasty now. There's, there's just a lot of like hesitation coming through here. And it's like every time this person thinks about taking action towards you, that hesitation ends up winning out. Okay, I want to grab maybe a couple more cards and see if there's anything, um, anything more that wants to come through here. We have, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we have the Five of Swords and the King of Swords showing up here. So, the Five of Swords, this is also, uh, this, this also pertains to conflict. It can represent disappointment, defeat. Um, some, in, in some cases, it can represent like a victory, but a very hollow kind of victory. Like you get what, you, you, you get something that you want, but it ends up 
not being as good as you thought it was going to be. It ends up not meeting your expectations. And then the King of Swords is all about communication and openness and honesty. I do feel like this person wants to be open and honest with you about their feelings and about this interest that they have in you. And, you know, kind of building upon that, they, they want to be able to try to build up some sort of relationship you know not saying that they want to like immediately ask you to go on a date with them necessarily but I just get the sense that this person wants an opportunity to get to know each other better and build something up with you you know maybe starting more platonically um, laying down some foundations for something per to become more serious perhaps in the future okay um, hmm and like I said, I get the sense that for a lot of you, this is someone that you work with or used to know through work um, or possibly school, a classmate, a former classmate, if you're in school or college or anything. But like I was saying a couple minutes ago, this person's you know hesitation and uncertainty seems to win out every time they think about actually talking to you directly or approaching you somehow. Because it seems to me like they have this fear that you are not interested in them, like that the feelings are not reciprocated or that you you will reject them or something. Uh, for some of you, it's possible that you are already in a relationship with somebody else or uh, maybe they think that you are for some reason or they just have this belief this thought process that you're not going to be interested or that you there maybe they're not your type and and you know they're gonna have their feelings hurt somehow so like if you know who this is and you are also interested with this person then i would suggest you know <laughs> making efforts to like I don't know, express some sort of interest in them, like do do something to let them know that you are open to them coming towards you. Um, and if if they feel more confident about that, then I feel like they will actually take that action. But um, I mean, if if the feelings are not mutual, then you really don't have to do anything here. Because I, I really, I don't see this person actually, like, bothering you or becoming a, a nuisance in any way. It really just feels like for the majority of you, this person is just watching you from a distance. I feel like they're not, they're, they're probably not, you know, commenting on things that you're posting or liking everything that you post. And uh, again, in fact, you, you probably well, you, you may not even be aware that they're following you on any platforms. It's almost like this person is just like a little, I don't know, I want to say like a little ghost, just sort of floating around you. Just observing, not getting in the way, not really causing any trouble. Just trying to figure you out, trying to see what you're all about. They may be a little bit intimidated by you even because it just seems like they, this person is viewing you as, you know, very attractive and they see you as like really, hmm, how do I want to say this? It's like they, they perceive you as really having it together, like really having your life together and they see you as being pretty... I'm I'm trying to figure out like the word that I want to use here. Um not exactly ambitious necessarily, but they it's like they see you as just being very focused in your life like you know, you've got your things going on that you're doing, you have your life that you're living and you're just focused on you know, your stuff, doing what you're doing and pursuing your goals and you know, they they feel like you're just really not paying any attention to them whatsoever. Um, and so they're kind of reluctant in that way to approach you as well because it's like they, even though they're really interested in you and they want to know more about you, 
at the same time, like the idea of your attention being put upon them directly is kind of scary to them. Because they just see you as being so attractive and so intelligent and having things so, you know, together. They kind of feel like they're out of your league. And, and, and these cards are kind of talking about that as well. Like this Queen of Pentacles, this is sort of how they're viewing you. You know, the Queen of Pentacles is very stable. She's very abundant, very prosperous. She, you know, she, she has it together. And this is regardless of, you know, your gender. Um, but the, the, that, the, same, the principles apply, you know, that energy is still applicable. Um, and meanwhile, they're sort of seeing themselves as having more of this, you know, full page of cups energy, this more, I don't know, it's, <laughs> these cards tend to be a little bit youthful, they can represent like immaturity sometimes, inexperience, stuff like that. Um, they may feel that they are just not quite at the same level as you in their life. Um, you know, they might feel like you're better than they are in some ways. You know, maybe at work they feel like you, they, they, they may feel like you, you, you're doing a lot better than they are at work. Um, like you have a lot more skills and, you know, uh, talents and like leadership abilities than they do in the workplace. Or if you know each other more like through school, maybe you're doing really well academically or maybe you're in a lot of like extracurricular things and they're just, you know, they're, they're just not. Or, you know, they might think that you're doing really well academically um, or assume. And it's just like, man, they're, they're just so much smarter than I am and they so much more stable and abundant than I am and they have more friends than I do they seem to have a more interesting life than I do I just don't know where I would fit in you know I don't know how I can compete with that not that they want to compete with you necessarily but you know they they feel like they would have a better chance at getting to know you they would have a better chance at um, having a relationship with you if if the playing field was more balanced if that makes sense like you would be more receptive to them if they were at a similar place in their life as you are in your life and they just feel like they're not okay and you know that feeling could be true it could be accurate or it could just be them projecting like projecting their own insecurities. Okay, group one, um, I think I'm going to leave it at that. That's what I'm seeing as far as who is watching you and why they are watching you. And um, a little bit about their their feelings and their thought processes about you right now. So um, I hope this was interesting. I hope that this resonated with you. I really appreciate it appreciate you guys joining me today you know keep in mind these are just general readings so take what applies to you take what resonates with you leave the rest behind if something doesn't fit don't try to make it fit okay so like i said thank you for joining me today i hope i see you guys next time bye all right those of you who chose group two with the golden tarot and the dalmatian jasper let's find out who's watching you and why have the Knight of Cups, first of all, Eight of Swords, Ace of Cups, Five of Cups, the Hierophant, the Tower, interesting. Three of Coins, Ace of Swords, The Hanged Man, and on the bottom of the deck, Group 2, we have the Chariot. Okay, 
So, give me a second to look over these cards, guys. Um, hmm, interesting. We have some kind of intense energies coming through here, group two. Um, the, the most intense being with this tower card. The tower tends to represent very sudden, very significant changes happening. Um, it can represent things like, like situations just really going off the rails, like something completely not going according to plan, things just falling apart. Um, the Eight of Swords here tends to be about isolation, withdraw. It can represent someone feeling stuck or trapped, confined, um, but particularly by one's own, you know, thoughts or feelings. Um, it can represent like self-limiting thoughts or beliefs that a person might have. The Five of Cups is about sadness, grief, loss. It can represent negativity or like a pessimistic kind of attitude as well. Um, the Chariot, this is not really a... Well, I mean, the, the energy of this card overall is pretty neutral, but it is a pretty action-oriented card. Um, it does sort of speak to me of passion and intensity to some degree. Um, it's very much about movement. It's very much about choice, ambition, drive, willpower, that sort of thing. So, um, right in the middle of this spread, we have the Hierophant, which relates to tradition and convention. Um, this is s solid, you know, grounded earth energy. The Hierophant is sometimes seen as a teacher, a mentor sort of figure. Uh, it can represent marriage, you know, commitment in relationships. I do get the impression that for the majority of you who picked this deck, this person that we're talking about is somebody that you have had some sort of history with. Um, and by that I mean, it, it seems like this is someone that you've either been in a relationship with and things didn't work out, or this is someone who you maybe like dated or maybe considered dating in the past. You know, there it, it may not have had an ap opportunity to actually develop into a real relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? But I feel like you've had some sort of, you know, rom like romantic um, connection to this person at some point in time. Or, you know, another possibility is that this person was romantically interested in you and you weren't exactly interested in them. And so things just kind of fell apart there. Um, whatever the case, you know, take this how it resonates with you. Take this how it makes sense to you. Um, I just, yeah, I, I just feel like this person is someone who had expectations for their relationship with you or they had hopes for their relationship with you that didn't get to manifest. Things didn't go the way that they wanted or anticipated as far as your connection was concerned. And so there is some, there is some sadness coming through here. With that, there is some hmm, disappointment, frustration to, to an extent. It seems to me like this person does still have some romantic feelings towards you, and it feels like they are stuck. It seems like this person is ha or has become very stuck on their connection to you. Um, with the Hanged Man being here and the Eight of Swords, uh, you know, like I said, this this tends to signify like somebody being stuck or feeling trapped in some way. And the hanged man is a little bit similar. You know, this is another very passive energy. Um, he's being suspended upside down. So obviously he, he is kind of, uh, he is kind of in a predicament, you know, he's not really going anywhere in that position. Um, and hmm, I'm trying to figure out like how I want to explain this. It, it seems like there is or there was, from their perspective, a real lack of closure to this situation with you. Um, 
the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Swords being here, you know, both of these cards relate to new beginnings. Both of these cards can relate to opportunities, um, offers being made, messages coming through even, especially the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Cups in particular tends to be more about um, offers or messages coming through relating to love or relationships. Like this card can represent somebody opening up to another person emotionally or offering somebody their love that sort of thing. I feel like this person has, you know, like I said, I feel like they still have feelings for you, but I also feel like they have things that they would like to say to you still. Um, I do get the impression that most of the watching that this person is doing is happening online. Um, they may not necessarily be following you on any platforms or like be friends with you on Facebook or anything like that. But I feel like they are at least periodically, you know, going to your account and looking to see if anything's changed, you know, looking to see if you've changed your like relationship status or if you've uploaded a new profile picture, you know, stuff like that. Um, trying to gather little little bits of information about what might be going on in your life just you know just by um looking at that stuff okay because i i really feel like for most of you this person probably doesn't actually have very much access to information about you right now so like what they can see what they can look at is very limited and because the picture that they, they have of you at this point in time is so limited, um, it seems like f for, for some of them, like their imaginations maybe get away from them sometimes. Like they might be, <laughs> they, they might be filling in some blanks, like just using their imagination, like things that they think you might be doing or things that they think you're up to right now. Does that make sense? It's kind of weird, to be honest. And another thing that's kind of weird here is that there seems to actually be like a little bit of, I want to say, I want to say a little bit of like bitterness coming through here, like resentment almost. Um, like because things didn't work out the way that they wanted or hoped that they would with you, they have a little bit of frustration and resentment that they're still kind of feeling towards you or like towards something that happened between you. Um, hmm. You know, I don't really feel like this person is checking up on you all the time. Um, but I, I feel like they are thinking about you more frequently than they are actually trying to see what you're doing. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's it's a little bit weird. It's kind of interesting what's going on with this person. If It seems like they're watching you because they still have... I mean, they, they still have feelings, but they also still have resentment. They're, they're also still kind of upset about whatever went on between the two of you. And they just they haven't been able to let it go and i feel like they are to some extent jealous of you of like the things you're doing um cuz it's like they from their point of view they they feel like or they think that you know based on what they can see it looks like you are you know just living your life having a good time Maybe you've gotten into another relationship. Maybe you are, you know, doing great things in your career, or, you know, whatever. Um, from their perspective, it just looks like you are having a great time and you're really focused on doing your thing and living your life. And that also sort of upsets them because it's, it's like, you know, like they're not even thinking about me. You know, I'm over here thinking about them all the time and they're not thinking about me. They've just moved on. They just don't care anymore. Like, that's what they, that's what this, that's what your watcher um, seems to be thinking. 
And, you know, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, but that's what things look like from their perspective, just based on the limited things that they can see about you. And like I said a minute ago, I feel like a lot of them are kind of jealous. A lot of them see you out here living your best life. You know, that's what it looks like to them. And they're jealous because, like... They want to be part of that, but they also just in general want that for themselves. Like they feel like they are not living their best life because, you know, partly because they are still stuck on your connection, like whatever happened between the two of you. You know, this is general, so it's going to be different for everybody, but it feels like for a lot of you, you know, maybe you cut ties with this person, maybe you broke up with this person for whatever reason. For others, though, I feel like this was something that they kind of did themselves. Um, I mean, even even if you cut ties with them, it could have been still because of something that they did. Um, I mean, for, for a lot of you, it just feels like this is something that they... You know, this was the consequence, this ending of your relationship, of your connection to each other, was the consequence of something that they did or maybe didn't do in some cases so there's also some frustration like towards themselves because on some level they recognize that they probably should have done some things differently with regards to your relationship they might have made some mistakes and it's like they just can't seem to let go of that stuff They, I think I mentioned this earlier, but it's like they feel like they need closure. And, you know, for some reason they f think that maybe by keeping tabs on you and seeing what you're doing, that will eventually they will be able to get some kind of closure. Um, but it doesn't really work that way most of the time. And also I kind of feel like this may be a situation where they just need to c create closure for themselves because... You know, not every situation works out the way that we would like. Not every situation um, has a nice, neat little ending where you can wrap things up uh, perfectly. Sometimes we don't get closure, and nobody really owes it to us to give us that closure. I think that may be something that this person has yet to learn. But, um, yeah, group two, that's what I'm seeing as far as who is watching you and why. Um, if you know who this is and you really don't want them to be keeping an eye on you, then I would definitely suggest, like, just going ahead and searching them, up, searching them up so that you can, like, block them or changing your privacy settings so that they can't see anything that you might be posting, um, you know, whatever. All right, so group two, I think I'm going to leave it at that. That is what I'm seeing for you guys today. I hope this was interesting. I hope that this resonated with you. Um, you know, keep in mind this is just a general reading, so not everything is going to be applicable to every person. Take what applies to you, take what resonates with you, and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit, okay? Um, Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I really appreciate it, and I hope that I see you next time. Bye. All right, those of you who chose group three, the Santa Muerte Tarot with the Rose Quartz, let's find out who's watching you and why. So let me shuffle these cards, see what comes out. All right, we have the Seven of Pentacles coming out right away. Two of Cups. Oh, okay, interesting. Ace of Cups, Three of Wands, Ooh. the Moon, the Five of Pentacles, Page of Cups, Ooh.
Eight of Pentacles. Let me grab one more. And the Fool. And then on the bottom of the deck, we have the Queen of Cups. All right, group three, give me a second to look these cards over. Hmm. Okay, so the, the first thing that I want to kind of comment on here, with the Seven of Pentacles, the very first card that came out, um, you know, this card does relate to long-term investments. It talks about slow but steady progress being made towards our goals. And the imagery on this card, I know that this guy here is using an abacus, but it kind of looks like he's peering you know, through these bars, <laughs> like, like he's spying on someone or something, you know what I'm saying? Um, the Two of Cups here talks about unions, partnerships, unconditional love. Um, it can represent marriage or long-term commitments. The, let's see, the Queen of Cups here that's on the bottom of your deck. This is unconditional love, passion, uh, or compassion, um, empathy. This is a, just a very gentle, very loving kind of energy, and it tends to represent really strong emotional bonds between people. Um, the Ace of Cups relates to uh, new beginnings, especially in the realm of love or relationships. It can represent love offers being made or people expressing when their emotions to others or you know offering their love to another person um so again a, a, a very loving very emotional um sort of vibe there the three of wands is about opportunity and potential this is kind of like the card of limitless possibilities okay anything can happen anything is possible the moon is about the unknown. It's a very, it's kind of a mysterious energy, okay? It's, it relates to intuition, the subconscious, things that are hidden, things that are concealed, especially, um, especially in terms of like one's emotions or what's going on inside of oneself, if, if that makes sense. The Five of Pentacles is instability, insecurity. It can represent loss, okay? Something something falling apart, something, um, something, oh my gosh, some sort of structure or something that's been built up kind of crumbling, falling to pieces. The Page of Cups is quite similar to the Ace that we talked about just a minute ago. Again, this is love offers being made. This can represent the start of a new relationship, romantic feelings beginning to develop, that sort of thing. The Eight of Pentacles is about hard work, making the effort to achieve our goals. This is dedication, commitment, that sort of thing. Um, you know, dedication to our goals or in the relationship context, dedication to a relationship with another person. Um, and a willingness to, you know, put work into our connections with other people. And the Fool, again, this is about new beginnings. This is about the start of something brand new. Um, it can also relate to immaturity, inexperience, youthfulness, etc. With all of that said, group three, um, it's kind of interesting because there's... <laughs> Some of these energies to me feel a little bit conflicting and that gives me the impression that your relationship to the person who is watching you may be somewhat complicated. Um, I feel that this definitely could be somebody that you were in a relationship with at one time or this could be somebody that you are in a relationship with if if that makes sense like how do i want to say this it it feels like some of you may technically still be attached to this person but there's some kind of break going on okay do you know what i'm saying so like this could be your partner but you the two of you may be taking a break from your relationship right now for some reason um 
or this could be somebody that you recently ended a relationship with. You, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, it feels like this connection that you have to this person, it feels like this is something that you have, at least in the past, put a lot of work and effort into. And it feels like this is somebody that you maybe had plans for the future with, with the Three of Wands being here. It feels like there is, or at least was, at one time, a lot of love between you and this individual. Because I'm just feeling a lot of closeness, and I'm feeling, like I said, that there was a lot of effort, a lot of work being put into this relationship. I feel like the two of you probably, you know, took a lot of time to, to build this up, to, to build something together, but something happened that caused things to fall apart or that caused things to destabilize. And I feel like for whatever reason, it's, it seems like there's been an ending here or at least a temporary ending, a pause, a break, like I mentioned earlier. And I really get the sense that right now you and this person are probably not in contact with each other. Um, it's like the plans that you guys had made for this relationship, for your lives together, didn't pan out the way you expected or wanted them to. Um, and this is a, kind of similar to group two's message. So if you felt drawn to that deck, you might want to listen to that reading as well. Um, but the difference here is that you know, with group two, it felt more like with, with, with you guys, the connection between you and this person feels a lot stronger. It feels a lot more significant. It feels like there, there's a lot more history between you and this person than between, you know, group two and the person that was coming through for them. Does that make sense? It feels like this connection to this individual was very significant in some way. And I feel like I need to pull a few more cards here. I, I feel like there's some something that I'm missing. Um, let me see what else comes up. We have the Two of Wands. Yeah, that's sort of emphasizing like the Three of Wands energy. The Two of Wands is about like future planning. Um, it's also about choice. I Like I said, I feel like you and this person had made some big plans together or you had big expectations for your relationship with this person or they had big expectations for their relationship with you. Um, you know, maybe the two of you weren't quite on the same page as far as what you guys wanted out of it. Um, Okay, we've got the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups talks about walking away from something or leaving a situation behind. There is definitely a, a sense of sadness with this card. So usually it's about like not necessarily wanting to walk away from something, but being forced to or, you know, having like it, it's necessary for some reason. And we have the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords relates to communication, insight, clarity. She can also be sort of a harsh, you know, cold figure. She can represent cutting something out of your life that you no longer need or that is no longer serving you. Uh, I feel like for, <laughs> you know, this is just general, so take it how it applies to you. If it doesn't resonate with you, don't like, don't force it. But I feel like for a lot of you, You felt very close to this person at one time, but something happened that caused you to lose trust in them or, or something like that. And you maybe felt that it was necessary that you break things off or that you at least take a break, okay, to figure things out. And I feel like the only person, the, the only reason that this person is not in contact with you right now is because they feel that you don't want contact from them. The only reason they are at a distance is because 
you initiated that or they're under the impression that you want them to be at a, at a distance, if that makes sense. Hmm. So I, I feel like they're watching you probably online, like on Facebook, Instagram, etc. I feel like they probably are friends with you or they probably follow you or, you know, something like that. Or maybe you have mutual friends that and, and that, that kind of allows them to see a little bit of like what you're posting or what's going on with you. Um, but I also feel like they may be keeping tabs on you in real life as well, like asking people about you, like mutual friends, mutual acquaintances, family members, etc. Like asking people what you're up to, asking people how you're doing, um, asking people like what they think they should do in this situation or like what they think, um, <laughs> like, like asking people if, if maybe you've been talking to them about the situation, about the, the relationship, you know what I'm saying? Um, just trying to gather as much information as they can about like what's going on in your head, what you're thinking, what you're feeling about them. Okay. There is almost this sense of like desperation coming through here. Desperation might be too, too a little too much here, but it, it's it's kind of like that. It's this feeling like they just they feel like they need to know what's going on. They feel like they feel kind of at a loss about what to do in this situation. And they feel like they need to know what's going to happen. It's like the anticipation of not being sure what's going to happen next or what the outcome of this all is going to be is just driving them crazy. And so that's why they're watching you. That's why they're trying to keep tabs on you. Because they feel like they need answers. They feel like they need to know what's going to go, what's, what's going on and what's going to happen in, in, with regards to this. And it's, it's kind of tough, you guys, because to an extent, it's, it's like this person feels kind of devastated by what's going on. And you may be feeling that way, too. And you may also be saying to yourself, what, <laughs> what right do they have to feel devastated when they caused all of this? Because I feel like for a lot of you, this person did something or said something that, that ultimately led to the current state of things. Um... But it's like they, it's, it's like they're scared almost of what's going to happen next or what the outcome is going to be. And they're kicking themselves for, you know, whatever, whatever they did, whatever happened that led to this. So that's who I'm seeing as far as who's watching you right now. And like I said, the reason they're watching you, I feel, is because they, you know, they, they are still kind of clinging to your connection and they are really hoping for an opportunity to have like a second chance. For some of you, this may be even like a third or fourth chance. Um, but they're hoping for another chance, another opportunity to like make things right with you. Um, so that's what I'm getting group three. I hope this was interesting. I hope that this resonates with you. Um, you know, if something doesn't apply to you, if something doesn't resonate, don't worry about it. Uh, take what applies to you and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit, all of that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it there, group three. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I am wishing you guys all the best, and I hope I see you next time. Bye. And group four, those of you who chose the citrine with the everyday witch tarot, let's find out who's watching you and why. Oh, okay. So right away we have the hermit showing up here. Sorry about this glare. The hermit. Oh. 
We have the King of Wands. We have the Ten of Wands. The High Priestess. got the devil card right in the center position interesting hmm we have the three of swords and five of cups huh got some heavy energy coming through here guys we've got the tower hmm and let me get one more okay eight of pentacles and on the bottom of the deck, we have the world. Okay, so give me a second to look these cards over, group four. Huh. Uh, group four, the vibe here is kind of weird, I'm going to be honest. I mean, okay, the devil came out right in the center of your spread. The devil, obviously, not a super positive card. Um, this can represent things like codependency, addiction, toxic relationships, mental health issues. It can really signify like anything that might cause a person to feel really confined or restricted or trapped in their life. Um, we've also got five of cups here. This is loss, grief, sadness. It can also represent a pessimistic, negative kind of attitude. The three of swords, this is similar to the five of cups. This is grief, betrayal, heartache, um, mental and emotional turmoil. The tower card usually represents some kind of sudden unexpected change happening. It can represent uh, things like really just going totally off the rails, not going according to plan, things not meeting your expectations, things falling apart, things just crumbling around you in a very scary kind of way. The Ten of Wands usually indicates like some sort of burden, something that's weighing you down. Um, a lot of times it does be, it, it does, t um, oh my god. <laughs> A lot of times it does also relate to like letting go of some sort of burden, letting go of something that's really weighing on you. Um, I feel like, I, okay, let me, let me pull a couple more cards here. I need some more information. Okay, we have the Fool. We have Five of Swords. Hmm. Let me get one more. Nine of Wands. <sighs> Group four, what is going on? <laughs> okay. Let me start by saying this. I, I feel like more than likely the person that is watching you, group four, is someone that you probably have not actually been in like a romantic relationship with, or if you have, it's been some time ago, or it wasn't really that serious, you know, something like that. And I also feel like I feel a lot of jealousy, I guess, is, is the word for what I'm getting here. Um, this, this person that we're talking about seems to be... It, it almost seems to me like they are really jealous of you, like your accomplishments, you, you know, what you're doing in your life. It'll, it seems like they almost want to be you to an extent.
and there's a lot of, I mean, geez, this is like, okay, this is like pretty, I mean, pretty heavy energy here. Um, and, and there's a lot of like, honestly, the, the word that comes to mind here is malicious, like malicious energy as well. It, it feels like, okay, I'm getting a couple of different like possible scenarios, but the, the gist of what I'm getting here is that this person at one point in time was either a friend of yours or somebody that you were dating, something like that. They wanted more out of your relationship, I think, than what they actually got out of it. Okay, it seems to me like they maybe took the relationship more seriously than you did, or they, they, they were just wanting more than you were willing or able to give them. Like, maybe the two of you just weren't really on the same page as far as, like, what you guys wanted from one another. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's like they really wanted to be close to you. They really wanted... They wanted to know, like, everything about you. They, they mm, it seems like they were almost obsessed or, like, very infatuated, fixated on you for some reason because they saw you and I think still see you as someone that they wanted to be like. Like, they view you as being very attractive, very smart, very very accomplished, or, or very, you know, capable. Somebody who has a lot of potential to do great things and, and be a great person. And it's like, they want all of those things for themselves. And so there was kind of this feeling like, maybe if they could get close to you, some of that, you know, some of that potential, some of that attractiveness might, might rub off on them. <laughs> um... I mean, I'm just going to be very clear about this. I feel like this individual has uh, some issues. Um, it feels like deep down they have very low self-esteem. They don't think very highly of themselves. They saw you as kind of what they wanted to be or who they wanted to be like. Um, somebody that they just really wanted to have in their life. Somebody that they wanted to be close to because it was like... They, they thought that your relationship, your friendship, whatever, would make them feel good and make them look better. Which is weird. Um, but I kind of get the sense that this person might put a lot of importance on, like, appearances. Okay? Um, so, basically, I, I feel like this is an ex-friend, an ex-partner, something like that. However, I feel for this person that your relationship, it was not, it was not really about actually having a balanced, you know, functional relationship with you. Your relationship was really about what they could get from you, like emotional validation, affirmation, stuff like that, uh, a confidence boost, you know. I really feel that this person we're talking about doesn't have a lot of self-awareness. Um, I feel like they don't really know how to self-reflect. And they don't really have a relationship with themselves. And so they kind of, they, they, they might have a tendency to seek love, attention, affirmation from external sources because they cannot get it from within themselves. Um, like they just don't, they don't have that like emotional intelligence or, or, you know, that ability. But anyway, this is someone who may have at first come across to you as being very likable, very genuine, you know, sincerely interested in being your friend or having, or, or, you know, dating you or whatever. But I feel like as time went on, it may have become more obvious to you that that 
you were kind of being used like as a crutch for them or that you know their intentions were not pure okay it just seems like as time went on this your, your connection to this person just became more and more of a burden until it got to the point where you felt that you you know you you just you couldn't do it any do it anymore you had to break this off you had to you know cut ties and i think for some of you like this happened quite a while ago like possibly years ago and this person is still watching you because they still see you as having all these things that they want and being like what they want to be okay um and there's just so much, oh my god, there's just like so much jealousy and so much. It's like in, instead of looking at you as inspiration, instead of seeing what you're doing and using that as motivation or, you know, like what they should be striving for in themselves, it's like they don't actually have a lot of motivation to improve themselves, to actually be more like you, you know, to, to actually embody the things that they want. So like they're, they're watching you because they want what you have, they want to be who you are and, and do the things that you do. But instead of actually making the effort to, you know, go out and pursue their dreams and be a better person and all of that stuff. It's like they're just kind of sitting there, like, stewing with all these negative emotions. They're not actually doing anything to improve themselves or improve their own lives. They're just watching you and wishing they had what you have coveting what you have and what you're doing but not actually making any effort to you know get those things for themselves and i also feel like another part of why they are still watching you is because they may still be holding on to some resentment or anger or hurt um surrounding like your relationship ending okay um because like I said, I, I get the sense that a lot of you, you know, realized that this person was not, you know, not a good influence or not a good presence in your life and probably distanced yourselves from them or cut them off completely. And I feel like this person still holds on to a lot of resentment and hurt pertaining to that. Um, I mean, for first of uh, small-ish number of you, this person may actually be like a stalker. Um, this person may actually be doing things or maybe has done things in the past to actually like make you feel kind of threatened or unsafe in some way. Um, that's not, that's certainly not the case for all of you. For others of you, this person is just watching you from a distance. Um, online primarily uh you know looking at the pictures you post looking at your updates and you know what what they're able to see possibly even looking at like people on your friends list or other people that you follow trying to see if there's anything like on their profiles on their accounts that might pertain to you somehow it's like they're just digging for whatever information they can possibly find in order to just feed those negative feelings that they're harboring still. This is someone who I think just loves to be miserable. Um, <laughs> that, that might sound kind of harsh, but honestly that's what this feels like. This is someone who just kind of loves to be miserable or they just love to wallow in their negative emotions, but they don't really like to actually do anything about them. And honestly, it seems to me like most of you watching this probably haven't even really thought about this person in a long time. Like, you're just living your life pretty unbothered. Meanwhile, they are 
fixated on you (laughs) and like fixated on the past because like for them it's like it's almost like you represent to them everything that they feel like they can't have like everything that they want but can't achieve does that make sense i mean it kind of doesn't make that much sense like logically but like this is this is this person's thought process okay so like in reality all these negative emotions and all of this creepiness it it doesn't actually have that much to do with you specifically like as a person it's it, it has everything to do with their own issues and their projections and like their their own unhappiness with themselves okay do you know what i'm saying it's like when you did actually have a relationship with this person to some extent they kind of felt as though they were living vicariously through you like you know you were you were pretty you were really smart you did well in school you did well at work you know you were getting promotions like whatever like doing cool projects And, like, as long as they were a part of your life, as long as they were close to you or felt that they were close to you, they felt like they had those things, too. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Um, But then when you cut them off or you distanced yourself or whatever, um, they lost to that. And they just haven't gotten over it. Um, So that is why this person is watching you, because you are kind of a representation. You kind of symbolize for them the things that they don't like about themselves the things that they want to have but they are unwilling to actually work for okay um so (laughs) that's really interesting group four um i wasn't quite expecting to get anything like this but apparently enough of you have um uh creepers from your past uh still obsessed that that this message had to come through and if you know like who this is if you have an idea of who this might be you may want to like go ahead and like block that person so that they cannot see anything that you're doing or posting um or if you don't care then you know you don't have to do anything but um that's what i'm seeing for you guys group four very interesting message I hope it was interesting. I hope that it resonated with you. Um, You know, this is general, so take what applies to you, take what resonates, and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. Uh, Yeah, I think that's going to do it for today, guys. Uh, Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it, and I hope that I see you next time. Bye!